Today we'll be learning how to edit Kodak Gold in Lightroom and Negative Lab Pro. Let's get into it. So here is our negative. Let's start by getting this image all converted and then kind of cropped so it's not so crooked because this, when I scan this, I didn't have the photo straight. So let's work on that. So first we're gonna hit the R, R key to bring up the crop tool and we're just gonna drag these edges in. Doesn't need to be perfect right now. We just want to drag these edges in, partially for the scan, partially for uh, straightening this photo. And then we're going to hit Control Alt N to pull up Negative Lab, and I just have these settings here: Sources Digital Camera, Color Model Basic, Pre Saturation Three, Border Buffer. You can change that if you would like to, uh, but it's not necessary for how we've cropped it here. So we're going to hit Convert. And we have our nice conversion. And for now, I'm just going to click apply to close that box. Hit the R key again and drag these edges of the photo back out so we can get this thing straightened. Uh, hit the enter key and notice this isn't lined up well, but we will fix that. Let's uh, just drag this border up a smidge. All right, now we're gonna come down to the transform tab and click on the guided upright tool. I always forget what that's called. And what we're going to do is come up to the film border here and just click and drag to the other side. Try to line it up as close as you can. Come down to the bottom, same thing, line up with the film border, click and drag to the other side. Come up to this left side here, click and drag, try to line it up. And the right side, film border, click and drag. Okay, so this should have straightened our photo. Now I'm going to hit the R key for the crop tool and hit the control left bracket a couple times. Nope. <laughs> uh, this makes it a little easier to see. So I'm just going to get rid of the numbers on this one because it doesn't look very good with the numbers. They're too far away from the actual photo. So it looks kind of hokey. So I'm just going to get rid of those and bring these borders in just a touch. I think that'll be good. Hit the control key and the left bracket to rotate that to the left. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit the crop tool more time and just give a little bit more edge on this left side there. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch more on this side. Good enough. All right. Now we'll bring up Negative Lab Pro again. So we're gonna hit Control Alt N to bring that up. Um, this scan looks pretty good. So I'm not going to be doing a lot to it. Um, like I've said in other editing videos, if you do your scans right, you really don't have a lot to do as far as like color correcting. But anyway, we'll uh, jump in here. We'll just mess with some of these advanced settings just for fun. I'm just gonna go through these quickly and just see if there's any major changes we can see changing some of these settings. I'm not really seeing anything, so I'm just gonna leave this alone. Color first seems to have a little more saturation, so I'm going to leave that there. If we add density, that just adds more contrast. Neutral density is where we started, and subtract density. Don't think I'll do that. I'll just leave this at neutral density. Let's just run through these color methods quickly, just to see if anything stands out as far as looking better or improving the image. Not really seeing any major differences, so let's just do highlight weighted. Yeah. Highlight weighted is a little bit more neutral, kind of removes some of the blue. There's kind of blue in the shadows down here. These two boxes generally don't do a lot, so I'm gonna leave that alone. We'll jump back to the edit panel. Let's just run through. I don't really need to mess with the tone profile, I don't think. No. I'm gonna just leave the tone profile on lab standard. It's a little contrasty, but we can remove a little bit there. And I'm gonna come down to the white balance and just kind of skim through these quickly. Auto added more blue back in. None is very blue. Auto neutral is where we started. Auto mix kind of adds a little bit of Magenta, or not magenta, greens. Auto warm. It's not bad, kind of makes it look more like gold. But the car looks off. 
Auto cool. Ooh. Okay. Let's just stick with auto neutral and then we'll add some warmth back in when we're in Photoshop. Um, let's see, HSL, let's just run through this quickly. That changed the color of the Porsche, the green Porsche in the back quite a bit, wow. Didn't really mess with the Lambo a lot, except for the natural kind of did. Okay, so we're gonna go with natural. That kind of loosened the colors up a little bit. Um, I am gonna add a little bit of sharpening. I like to do that. Oh, it's already on actually, so we don't need to mess with that. I may just bump the black clip down just a touch more. Let's see. Okay. Everything else looks good here. I don't want to mess with this too much. We'll do the rest of our adjustments in Photoshop. So I'm going to click apply here. And then right click on the image and go to edit in and send this to Photoshop. Okay, now that we're here in Photoshop, I like to make the adjustments to the photo first but I don't want to make any adjustments to the film border. So to do this, we'll click on the quick selection tool or hit the Q, oh, not Q, the W key, and just slowly start to select the photo. We don't want to select the film border because we don't want to make adjustments to that. Unless you do, then you can select that. So this shouldn't be too bad on this image because there's a plenty of contrast between the image and the film border. So Photoshop shouldn't have too much difficulty making the selection here. It might struggle down at the bottom. Actually, we're already past that. Well, dang. Oh, okay, so we did have a little bit of an accident, but that's okay. If we hold the Alt key and click and drag, this should snap the selection back to the film border without too much issue. Yep, sweet. Super easy. Uh, I'm gonna let go of the Alt key and just finish selecting the image here. Make sure we got all these little parts selected. It's always a good idea just to run through after you've made your selections and see if you've missed anything. And there's a couple things. I missed the space between the spoiler here and I missed the spoiler on the Gallardo. Sorry, all the Italians. I just butchered Gallardo. <laughs> I say Gallardo because I'm an uneducated American. <laughs> but and I'm gonna butcher the butcher when I say Giardo, but Giardo. Okay, back on track here. So we've got the uh, image selected. Now we can jump into the filter menu and go to the camera raw filter. This is basically Lightroom in Photoshop and we can make adjustments normally. Uh, if we were in Lightroom right now, all these adjustments would be inverted. But since we have created a copy of this image and sent it to Photoshop, the adjustments are normal. So when I start off in camera raw filter, I like to jump down to the curve panel and just kind of, usually I need to reduce contrast a little bit and open up shadows. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. I like to open up the darks and then add a little bit of shadow back in. It just uh, deepens the blacks. I like that look. It's not overly contrasty, but it looks nice. This image doesn't need a lot of lights because the sky is pretty blown out as we can see. So I'm going to tone that down just a touch and see what happens if I bring down the highlights. See if we can bring back some of the sky. I don't want to go all the way down. That's pretty crunchy. So I'm just going to pull this down a little bit and then we can make adjustments in the HSL panel when we get to that point. Um, the exposure doesn't really need to be adjusted much. So I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny amount we don't need a lot of contrast because we've been removing it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit there. Highlights, I'm going to bring down just a smidge. Try to bring some of that sky back. But again, I don't wanna do too much because I think I can bring some back in the HSL panel. Shadows will push up a little. Lights. I am gonna bump those just a touch, bump them up. And the blacks will deepen a little bit. And if we hit the P key, that'll show us a before and after. Not a huge difference, mostly just opening up shadows. This is a before, this is after. It's kind of flat, but we'll get there. Texture, we're gonna add a little bit of texture. Whoa, that's way too much. HDR, bro. Okay, and we're gonna add a little dehaze. All right, let's come down to the HSL here, and I do want to try to bring back some of the skies, I think. Let's see, what is the sky? Luminance, aquas. 
having trouble figuring out what color the sky is. Okay, there it is. Ooh, look how crunchy that is. We don't want to do that. Ooh. So I'm just going to add just a small amount. That looked pretty nasty. Just checking my before and after, making sure I'm not adding too much. Uh, so that's pretty much everything here in Lightroom. I don't think this needs much else. I would like to bring a little bit more of the sky back, but it's been so long since I've done my original edit to this photo, I can't remember what I did to bring the sky back. So maybe add a little bit of warmth and maybe we'll add a little bit of vibrance. Maybe not. Vibrance and saturation. Let's see what we got here. How are we looking? Eh, I'm gonna back off that warmth a little bit. Not bad, not great. Actually, honestly, I think I like the look of the unedited photo better than the edited one. <laughs> Other than the reds that were kind of opened up a little bit with what we've done as far as editing, but that's okay. All right. So we're gonna hit okay and control D to deselect this. Now, we don't need this brush panel open. We can get rid of that. Now I'm just going to remove these little uh, distractions in the photo. There's one here and one here, and then I'll run through and dust this. I'll speed this part up so you don't have to sit through it. Oh, and there's one other distraction here. There's the top of somebody's head. So let's get rid of those and uh, we'll uh, meet back up here in just a sec. Okay, I think that's all the distractions other than this lady's head. There we go. You'll notice I used the generative fill tool to remove the lady's head and to get rid of the light post over here. I didn't edit it out here. I think I did on my original edit, but since this is just a copy, I'm not gonna worry about this. Um, but it did clean up the edge here. There was a bottom of a light post that's gone now and then the light post that was up here, that's all completely gone. So that's just a generative fill tool. Works pretty good for removing things if the content aware tool does not. So now I'm going to dust this real quick. So I'm gonna use the healing tool and sometimes I will use the lasso tool if the piece of debris or whatever is large enough. So I'm just gonna run through this quickly and, uh, we'll, uh, and uh, we'll wrap up the image. Let's zoom out here and see where we're at. That's looking pretty good. There's a couple little scragglers up here that I missed. So we're going to hit those. Gotcha. If you can tell me the movie that line comes from, I will personally give you a high five. All right. After skimming through, it looks like we got everything. There's a couple little things down here on the concrete, but these are like stains on the actual concrete, not something from the film or developing. So I'm gonna leave those alone and not worry about it since this is just a re-edit of an already edited picture where that is removed. But yeah, that's how you edit Kodak Gold in Lightroom and Negative Lab Pro, also Photoshop. Uh, it's super easy. Kodak Gold is awesome. It looks really nice uh, as we can see from this wonderful Gallardo and Porsche. I'm gonna offend people, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, really quick before I cut this out. I did forget if you want to send this back to Lightroom, you just hit control S to save it and your file will, oops, that's the wrong, that is not the right thing. Your file will reappear in Photoshop and we can tell because this is edit number two and is a TIFF file. Photoshop will send these back to Lightroom as a TIFF. So here is my original edit and here is my uh, edit from just now and we can see because it's been so long since I've edited this photo that the original looks a lot better than the one I just did. Uh, well, I guess I, I wouldn't say it looks better. It just looks different. There's a lot less contrast. And now that I've looked at it, I actually kind of prefer today's edit over the uh, older edit, but we're splitting hairs here. It is what it is. That's why you can, that's the joy of having a digital copy of a file. You can edit it and edit it and edit it and have all sorts of different flavors and make changes. Uh, as your tastes change. This video is getting very long, so I'm gonna end it here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>